Since 1937, Columbus Day has been an official federal holiday in the United States. As we celebrate the legacy of the man who discovered America, not too many people realize who Christopher Columbus really was. Was he Italian? To answer this question, I invited Manuel Rosa. Welcome to the program. Hey, Nick. And Thanks uh, for inviting me. Manuel is doing research for past 20 years, right? More than 20 years. Over 20 years. It's going to be 25 subject. years. Next year, it's going to be 25 years that I've been investigating the life of Columbus. Yeah, as a Polish American, I must say, you know, it's quite intriguing to find out that Christopher Columbus, or for that matter, Christopher Colon, was Polish. I think today I can say with 100% certainty that Columbus was the son of the King of Poland. King? King Ladislaw III. So yeah. King Ladislaw III supposedly uh, was killed in the Battle of Varna in 1444 against the Turks. However, there's proof now that he survived the battle and he went on to live in the island of Madeira in Portugal under an assumed identity. And Columbus would be his son. This is quite revolutionary. I, I mean, you, you have a book. This is a book uh, in Polish language. If this proves to be true, all the books have to be rewritten and everything that we know about Christopher Columbus is wrong. Yes, uh, almost everything you know about Christopher Columbus is wrong, even his name. He was not called Christopher Columbus. His name in Spain was Cristobal Colón and somebody in Rome corrupted the name in 1493 from Colón to Colombo and, and the Colombo guy is the one we've been writing about for the last 500 years. However, um, all the documentation shows that his name was never Columbo, Columbus or Colombo. His name was Colón, and he chose that name because he came from the house of Colonna, and that's one of the clues to identifying who his real family is. I've been to your lectures three times, and the uh, first time I went uh, at the Kosciuszko Foundation, I came to listen to the guy who for me was, uh, I mean, it's interesting, but, but I didn't really believe that this is possible. Living in America, living through the Columbus's parades and all Italian people, now, your presentation sent the chills through my body because it's very well documented. Yes. And uh, the first lecture I went to was three years ago. You still cannot break through. You, you probably are not too popular within the scientific community. Yeah, that's true. I'm seen as, a, as a, uh, somebody on the fringe that's doing some fringe, fringe research and who is trying to rewrite history that's already written in stone as they, as they see it. And in fact, as you, see, as you saw from my lecture, uh, everything I say is documented, it's documentation, and it's following evidence to where the evidence leads. It's not assuming it was Italian and then try to prove it was Italian. And so all the evidence proves that, um, that Columbus, uh, the guy we call Columbus, but Cristobal Colón, was a noble of royal blood, and he was the descendant of King Ladislao III, who was known in Portugal as Henrique Calamão, Henry the German. The common knowledge in America is that the Christopher Colombo was a peasant guy from Italy that suddenly happened to be in Spain mm -hmm. and uh, suddenly got all this big flotilla and discovered America. Yes, so the current history is written um, a lot on hearsay and on uh, invention. They, they chased after the wrong guy and then wrote history about that guy as if it was factual. In fact, uh, the whole, the, the true story is completely different. Uh, everything Columbus did was very well planned. It was a strategic um, political move that he was involved in. He knew where he was going before he left. Uh, Spain he knew exactly what, where he was going, what kind of people he would meet there. He knew that so well that uh, the trade, the stuff that he took to trade with the natives was nothing that he would have taken to the real India. He didn't take gold didn't take anything of any word to trade with the natives. He took glass beads, hawks bells, and things that he knew the natives would be enticed by. What this comes down to is that the whole history that we were told about this guy who was lost, didn't know where he was, who um, didn't know how to read and write and those kinds of things, is completely un, uh, against the documentation. Your lecture is about an hour and a half, hour probably, so we don't have enough time to, to go through the evidence that he collected, but what would be the most significant item or items that point to, to Christopher Colon be the son of Polish king? Well, there's uh, several things that I found early on in my investigation. Once I, once I was able to establish that the history was wrong and that Colum uh, Colon was not the Columbus guy from Italy, uh, that he was in fact born in Portugal of Portuguese uh, um, connection and um, Polish. 
The first thing that I discovered uh, in, the, in the documentation is this painting by Antonio Moro, where um, Antonio Moro painted this painting of Columbus in uh, 1570, and he painted a ring with a coat of arms on, on the guy's hand, and that ring has a bird on it. Uh, the second clue that came to me was uh, in Columbus' own private chapel, where he placed an eagle over his own coat of arms, where he's, it, it doesn't, it's never seen in public. In, uh, in Columbus's, in Cologne's coat of arms in public, he never has an eagle on it. But secretly, in his own private chapel, he actually put an eagle at the center of his coat of arms. So those two things, to me, started to lead me down the track of trying to identify really who he was. Where did this bird come from? And then I ran into uh, Henry the German, you know, King Ladislaw III that's living in Madeira. And that's how the connection starts to come together, because Cologne, we knew, also lived in Madeira, in Portugal. And so all these things coming together start to lead me down the path where I am today, where I can say confidently that uh, Cristobal Colon was the son of King Ladislaw III from Poland. What do you say to historians that say that the King Ladislaw III died at the Battle of Varna and the Turks cut off his head and submerged it in the honey? and uh, how, how he could be a father of Christopher Columbus. Well, it's very interesting. The, do, the, the historians do say that the king died in Varna. They say that very confidently. Uh, they'll, they'll come on, uh, on a book or a, the first thing that they say, the king died in Varna. Well, there was no body ever found. There was no arms of the king ever found. Uh, you know, there was no headless body. The headless body would not walk away. As a matter of fact, the Poles tried several uh, years and many times to go to the battlefield find where the king was buried to retrieve the bones. They never found them. Uh, the most that historians can say honestly is that the king disappeared in battle. They can never say that he died because they have no proof of, of his dead. And in fact, there's, there's enough proof that he survived. You know, there's, there are letters written uh, saying that the king is alive and living in, in, in Portugal. However, the solid evidence that the king survived the Battle of Varna is his sword. His sword was found in 1863 by a farmer uh, five kilometers from the battlefield in Bulgaria, near Varna. He dug up the sword of, the king, of King Vladislav III, and that sword today is in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. It seems to be obvious that the, uh, if the Turks actually killed the king, they would keep the sword. It's oh, like yes. a trophy. <laughs> if the Turks had captured King Vladislav III or killed him or anything, they would have kept his sword. They would not throw the sword away, you know, that's unbelievable. So it's, it's got kind of jewels a, in it, it's got, you know, I mean, it's a val very valuable sword, aside from the fact that it would be a trophy. King escaped or ran away from the battlefield. I guess there are three pl plausible scenarios where he would escape. One is, he could have swapped places with the guy who was really wearing his clothes, his armor. You know, he could have just said, well, I'm fully outnumbered here, uh, you go in my place. You know, and he could have just put on a, a, a monk's clothes and watch the other guy get killed. He could have actually gone through, uh, you know, attacked the Sultan, and while all the other knights around him got killed, he might have, by a miracle, succeeded in breaking through and keep running. Or he could have actually been captured and bought his freedom, or, or you know, or, or the Sultan might have said, hey, you get out of here and I don't ever want to hear from you again, you know, I'll let you go. That's a promise that you he know? kept. Right, <laughs> and so whatever reason is that he decided that he was gonna no longer Disappear. be king, he did, and he survived, and he went underground, and he never wanted anybody to know that he survived the battle. This is why Gustavo Colon um, never told anyone who his father was. His father required that his identity be kept secret. Well, I'm gonna say it again. Your presentation is perfectly documented. We don't have enough time to go through every little detail, but let me ask you, what would be the ultimate proof? Ultimate proof that Christopher Columbus He's a descendant of Polish king, not some guy from Italy. Well, we know he's not a guy from Italy. I think I've already shown enough evidence and enough uh, documentation to prove that the guy we call Columbus is not the Christopher Colombo wool weaver from Italy. That's been, that myth has been debunked. So he was not Italian and he's not a peasant from anywhere. I'm 100% convinced that Columbus is the son of the king of Poland. All the evidence points in that direction. However, there are, will be some skeptics that will only accept DNA. And I think that uh, eventually we will have to do DNA uh, with Columbus's bones, Col Columbus's son's bones, and the kings of Poland to um, prove that he was uh, from the house of the kings of Poland. There will be a huge opposition to, to prove it with the DNA. I think there is a lot of scientists, historians, that put their whole life into the subject 
and if a guy named Manuel Rosa turns everything around, everything that they worked for years will be scratched. Yeah, I think that a lot of people will, uh, will continue to censor me as they are doing now. Uh, they don't really want um, the history books to be rewritten. I mean, you can imagine uh, Columbus has been Columbus. Uh, Columbus has been the wool weaver from Genoa, Italy for uh, you know hundreds of years. There's thousands of books written in every language about the, the Italian guy from, uh, from Italy. And so um, we will have to basically stop writing about him and start writing about the son of the king of Poland as the guy who discovered America. Um, there'll be, there will be certainly be opposition, but uh, for anyone who wants to know the truth, DNA has to be uh, done. Do you think there should be some kind of involvement from the Polish government to help you, let's say, publish the book in English, start working on a DNA testing or anything else? Yeah, I think definitely, uh, you know, the Polish government could be um, more involved in, in supporting my research. Um, I wouldn't say that we need to go and do DNA right away. I think the main thing right now is to get the book into English where the world can access the, the, the research, read about it, and then say, they will come to their own conclusion that, hey, we got to do DNA. Do you have a translated book in English already? I do. I have my manuscript in English. I've had it for, you know, 10 years in English. I cannot find the U.S. You just publisher. updated, right? Time well, it's time. updated. Yeah, I keep, as I find new evidence, as a matter of fact, um, uh, new evidence that, that I have already in my uh, English manuscript is not in Cologne, we started in Iznana, which is that uh, actually, um, the kings of Poland are connected to the House of Colonna in Italy. Uh, there's a letter from uh, Pope Martin V. Martin V was uh, Oro Colonna, and he's from the House of Colonna, and this is written, I believe, 1421 to King Jagaila. And basically, Pope Martin V says, you and I are from the same House of Colonna. Interesting. And this is where Cristobal Colon, the, the, uh, Christopher Columbus' real name in Spain, this is where Colon went to get the name Colon. He got it from the House of Colonna, which is... Uh, as Pope Martin V said, which the kings of Poland descend from. There's a lot of people that say that Christopher Columbus was a naughty man. You know, we have to look at Columbus in, in the times that he lived, you know. So Columbus was a military man as, as much as he was a scholar, and he was trying to rule over a whole new world. So obviously he had to fight natives, and he had to kill some natives, and he had to uh, uh, basically push his rule onto them, which would not be an easy thing. However, uh, many, many of the things they attribute to Columbus, he never did. Those are things that happened after he left uh, the governorship. So Columbus returned in 14, uh, end of 1493 to the New World, to Haiti. He was arrested in 1500 and never set foot in Haiti again. So he ruled for seven years, and there's, a lot of, there's not so much a guy can do in seven years, especially with just 1,500 uh, Europeans against hundreds of thousands of natives. You know, he did commit some things that, you know, that are not too, uh, things that not to be uh, too proud of. But he was in a military situation, and this is what military uh, people do, you know. All right. This is the book. It's interesting that the book was published in Polish. It's not published in, in English yet. So we wish you luck. Yeah. We hope that one day we're going to see this uh, in every library. Well, I would say that it's been published in Portuguese, Spanish, Polish, and Lithuanian. But it has not been published in English yet, and I'm hoping to get that done uh, eventually because it'll change the whole history. It'll change how people see who Columbus was and what he was up to, and, and it'll also show them how the history went the wrong way, how the historians went the wrong way. All right, thank you very much for, you. for your time. Thanks for having me. I wish you good luck. We would like to see the book in English. We'd like to see DNA testing just to convince the rest of the world. Uh, sorry, right. our Italian friends, Columbus is ours. Columbus is Polish. <laughs> thank you, have a good evening. Sleep tight with the thought of Columbus being Polish.